And the Oscar goes to... Really? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst Best Picture Oscar-winning movies. For this list, we've chosen movies that won the Academy Award for Best Picture, but which we felt were eclipsed by films that didn't win or weren't even nominated the same year. We're not saying the movies are bad, but in hindsight, their competition was stronger. Number 10. Driving Miss Daisy. Oh, what you talking about? One against Born on the Fourth of July, Dead Poet Society, Do the Right Thing. Oh, in 1989, movies like Do the Right Thing, Glory, and Miss Daisy examined race issues, albeit in drastically different ways. But only the story of an elderly Jewish woman and her kindly black driver nabbed Oscar Gold. We're not suggesting Driving Miss Daisy is a bad film, but the Academy made the safe choice. Why don't we just leave it like that? Number 9. Gandhi. One against Tootsie, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. I'll be right here. Sometimes movies stand the test of time. Sometimes they don't. Unfortunately, this Best Picture winner falls into the latter category. And that I find hard to bear. While Sir Ben Kingsley's performance and the film itself were lauded in their time, today it's considered an overlong, corny snooze fest. You know what movies do stand up? The one about a boy and an alien, and the one about a guy in drag. Go figure. An eye for an eye only ends up making the whole world blind. Number 8. Around the World in 80 Days. One against Giant the King and I, The Ten Commandments. And there ain't a dang thing you're gonna do about it. People scratch their noggins when this beat a category full of epic classics. Today, it's even crazier to think that a hot air balloon topped Moses, The King of Siam, and James Dean. Around the World was basically a cash grab, with the big name cameos, gimmicky storytelling, and overall spectacle of the film, making it one of the big prize's weakest winners. My dear. I must ask you to leave these precincts at once. No woman has ever set foot in the club. Why not? Because that could spell the end of the British Empire. Number seven, Oliver. What? One against Funny Girl, Romeo and Juliet, 2001, A Space Odyssey. A plague on both your houses! The Academy isn't afraid to honor a good musical, or even a bad one. Oliver is somewhere in the middle, with Charles Dickens' timeless tale being told through big-budget song and dance numbers. 68 was a killer year for cinema, so to think that Oliver brought home the gold while movies like this weren't even nominated is a mind-bender. I can see you're really upset about this. Number 6. How Green Was My Valley Is there anything I can do? Indeed there is. One against The Maltese Falcon, Citizen Kane. Be reasonable, Sam. Give us a break, will you? This film tackles the story of a poor mining town. Not exactly life in the fast lane. But this isn't a case of the winning movie necessarily being bad. It just competed against cinematic landmarks. Did you even know Citizen Kane didn't win the Oscar? To be honest, the only reason Valley is at all memorable is because it beat Orson Welles' game-changing masterpiece. Could I have your attention, boys and girls? I am not accustomed to speaking in public. <laughs> Only public houses. But this, never use. It's against the rules. Number five, Dances with Wolves. One against Awakenings, Ghost, Goodfellas. Mother f mother f you, you, you the members of the Academy are suckers for historically meaningful Civil War epics. And this one even has Native Americans and subtitles and a dashingly handsome actor-director who tries to save everyone. You can't beat that. But Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas should've. They must not like the F word. Or apparently Scorsese, who was also snubbed for his 1980 tour de force, Raging Bull. Oh, you. And a horse you rode in on. FYI, he finally won for The Departed. What, are you retarded or something? That ain't right. <laughs> Number four, Chicago. One against The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, The Pianist. <laughs> we 
We've already mentioned how Oscar voters feel about musicals. Pretty much everyone in this movie was nominated, with Catherine Zeta-Jones actually winning Best Supporting Actress. Well, I was in such a state of shock. I completely blacked out, I can't remember a thing. But some critics complain that when it was adapted to celluloid, Chicago lost what made it a great musical to begin with. But there was another movie that year with plenty of soul. She's in Number 3. The English Patient. One against Jerry Maguire, Fargo. Yeah, that's a good one. To put it bluntly, this movie was widely considered dull. Just die already. <laughs> die! But sometimes, you have to move past your boredom to truly appreciate an artistic and beautiful film. No, we're kidding. No one wants to sit through an almost three hours long romance story set in the desert where the guy's face is burnt off. You know what they do want to see? Show me the money! Precisely. Or how about a nice wood chipper? Number two, Shakespeare in Love. One against Saving Private Ryan. In 1998, it was a triumph of the puff piece. The Oscars are notoriously dead set against comedies, but Shakespeare is also a period piece, which they love, and it had some fine acting and a breakthrough Gwyneth Paltrow performance. Maybe it was just time for a change. Regardless, after crafting one of the grittiest, most realistic, and well-regarded World War II films ever, Steven Spielberg must have been pissed. Oh, will you desist, madam? <sighs> Number one, Crash. One against Brokeback Mountain, Capote, Good Night and Good Luck, Munich. You say to these butchers, you didn't want to share this world with us, then we don't have to share this world with you. It's a star-studded, carefully interwoven tale about race, but a preachy one at that. You embarrass me. You embarrass yourself. When Paul Haggis' crash was announced as winner, you could almost hear the collective gasp around Hollywood. There were simply so many deserving movies that year, and one in particular that examined another pressing social issue in a much more memorable and less patronizing way. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Which Best Picture winners were you most surprised about? For more top tens about your favorite and least favorite flicks, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Notice will be posted!